Nation, what's up? I'm running crazy a little bit tonight. <laughs> Kids didn't really go down. Um, they're still not really down. I'm listening. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. If I have to run upstairs, I have to run upstairs. That's the way it is. Family first, right? Yes, I mean, it is. I mean, I love you all. I'm stoked to be here and talk talk about whiskey, but family is first. I'm going to check my settings here because I'm running a little crazy trying to get this on, make sure that I got the, yeah, I got the right mic on. Okay. I don't need headphones today because I'm not talking with anybody. Brian's not able to make it tonight. Busy guy. I mean, as we all are. So I'm going to taste a lot of whiskey and we're going to talk about it, interact with you guys. I'm going to bring up the chat here um, and I'm just going to follow along like old time's sake. Fred asks, how's the little one doing? She's great, healthy. Um, you know, we're all just trying to get our footing after the crazy season that's been. <laughs> I mean, you guys remember the delivery didn't really go as planned, but she came and that was good. And then five weeks later, 10 days in the hospital, but now she's okay. And we're adjusting, getting caught up on work. That's been a little slow going. I was drinking a lot. Not, I mean, not a lot. Like, it's, I'm not going on a bender here. I'm, I'm not getting drunk. Um, but, you know, I was having a couple, a couple three, maybe, each evening. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's a lot. Uh, probably a little more than I would like to rock out to each evening. So I'm going to dial it back a little bit. And so that's what I've been, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about strategies for drinking less ironic on a show where we're talking about whiskey. So we'll keep that to a minimum. At the same time, I do think it's healthy and important. I mean, I don't know how often you guys take a, take a break, drop, drop it in the, in the chat here. Let me know how often you guys, you know, take a little bourbon or alcohol fast. If it's never say never, but let me hear from you. Normally for me, it's about once a year that I try and take a more extended break. Um, and often it's it's in a season when I just find myself drinking more. It's like, okay, time to put on the brakes a little bit, slow it down. But in this break, I am drinking on Thursdays because of the live stream, which is actually one of the strategies for drinking less, is to not fully abstain. We'll talk more about that in a minute. I have some coffee here first um it is decaf because i want to sleep tonight but shameless plug here because i can do that because it's my channel uh rocking in the stone creek coffee decaf cream city uh that's a decaf colombian coffee medium roasted and it's good it's really good for decaf i mean decaf is never as good it's literally never as good as the real thing but this is pretty close a lot of decaf is really garbage uh, this is not garbage. So if you guys are looking for a good decaf coffee, stonecreekcoffee.com, um, and then go into the shop coffee tab, decaf cream city. If you haven't bought from Stone Creek before, the whiskey 15 um, coupon code, that's still active. That'll get you 15% off. So followers of Droopy Whiskey, get 15% off stonecreekcoffee.com for your first two orders, and you get free shipping always. So... If any of you have tried Stone Creek Coffee, you're a fully satisfied customer, get down in the chat. I'm not being paid to say this, but I am a part owner of Stone Creek, and this is my channel. So again, shameless plug. I'm sort of paying myself to say it, I guess, in radical transparency. All right. Um, so I'm going to go through the bits. I'm just going to talk a lot. Uh, again, hit me up, uh, channel uh, comments. Hit me up in the comments with questions. Make sure you at me so I can see it because it's hard for me to like read comments while I talk because I talk pretty much constantly when I do this by myself. Um, but I definitely want to hit any questions you guys have tonight, interact with you all since I don't have Brian with me this evening or another guest. Hopefully you guys caught. If you didn't catch it in the moment last Thursday, hopefully you caught the live stream with Jason over at the Mash and Drum. That was a ton of fun. Love that guy. I'm real salt of the earth type dude. Um Really enjoyed having him on. We'll definitely do that again. Of course, we loved having ADHD on a few times ago. We had the podcast with Blake from Bourboner. Hopefully, you guys caught that over at entryproofpodcast.com. I mean, a lot of really good conversations, and we're just scratching the surface. Hopefully, as we get our footing more with baby here at home, we're able to make those conversations slightly more regular, more in the once a week, once every two week range. But we are still working on new new uh, new stuff. 
I mean, the Starlight picks, I have them in hand now. I have not tasted them. So I, you know, I know some of you are waiting until we pop these suckers next week in the live stream. I too am waiting. I'm not going to taste these until then. Um, but I cannot wait next Thursday night opening the double, whoops, double barrel rye. So double oak rye and then the apple brandy finished bourbon. It's going to be great. It's going to be pretty dank. Um, so that was awesome. But we're also working a couple other barrel pick options. We're in touch with Middle West Spirits hope because we've had some banger single barrels of that Michelone Reserve from Middle West Spirits. I'm in touch with Jay Henry here in Wisconsin. We're in touch with Doc Swinson. Um, now, none of this is guaranteed, but we're hopeful and we're jacked about it. So if you guys are looking to, you know, make sure you're in on these barrel options in the future, go to patreon.com slash podcast. That's where you can make sure that you get access to barrel picks that we might do. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get to do. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, I'm just looking forward to popping those starlight picks for sure. Tom, is it your birthday, dude? So Tom Lynch, uh, admin extraordinaire. I'm seeing Eric show balloons that it's his birthday. Yesterday was his birthday. He's popping the Discovery Batch 4 tonight. That's a good good idea, Tom. It's a really good idea. I'm actually um, getting ready for a little bit of celebration myself. Nothing related to my birthday. My wife's birthday is Tuesday. I'm on it. I didn't do a good job with Mother's Day because we're getting out of the hospital, but I should have. I don't want to make excuses. I should have done better. But my wife's birthday is Tuesday, the 25th. I will do better. That said, that's not what I was talking about. I'm almost to 5,000 subs, like knocking on the doorstep here. I think next week we'll be at 5,000. So next week we'll pop the Starlight stuff. And then maybe the following live stream, I might have to pop the George T. Stag 2019 or something like that. Kyle Ramage in the chat cracked the apple brandy last night. Kyle, what do you think of that, man? What are your thoughts on that apple brandy? Right, let's give a little teaser to the folks maybe who are waiting to pop their bottles. Of course, Tom popped his Starlight picks with me, actually. I, I didn't pop them. I didn't taste them. But if you're not following me on Instagram, Drew P. Whiskey, at Drew P. Whiskey, you can go back and check out in the feed. There's a video of me and Tom going live where he popped his bottles. And uh, tasted them against a cognac finished Starlight. I mean, Starlight's finishing all kinds of whiskey in all kinds of barrels. They just released a honey barrel finish, similar to the Bell Mead honey cask. And then um, Brian shared with me today they're they're creating a cigar blend. You know, and what a cigar blend is, we see Magnus doing this. It's really just a blend of whiskeys that they're trying to pair with smoking a cigar, which sounds like. I mean, I'm not much of a cigar guy, but I plan to smoke a cigar soon, probably on my golf trip in July. And, and of course, I would pair that with bourbon, but I don't know which one yet. Maybe a cigar blend. Get in the chat here. I'm trying to finish my coffee before I get to whiskey, but I think I think the coffee is going to wait. I think we're going for going for whiskey here. Kyle says he's going to grab a fresh pour of those Starlight picks. That'll be good. That'll be good. Tell us what uh, what you're tasting. Hopefully they were. Well, here's the short question, Kyle, and we'll talk more about this next week. But are they as good as you remembered? Because Kyle was actually at the Starlight pick. Are they as good as you remembered in the moment? Are they as good as you remember them being in the moment? That's really what I want to know. All right. So first up today, we're going to talk about some weeded whiskeys. I've got the FAE-01, this year's Maker's Special Release. I really want to taste that because I haven't opened it yet. Taste it up against last year's SE4 PR5, which I really, really like. And then I figured, what the heck, one of my favorites, Weller 107. Let's taste these guys side by side, and then let's introduce the Weller 107. Let's try and decide what's best for my palate right now. So that'll be a lot of fun. Then we'll talk about strategies to drink less after we drunk a little. Then I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six whiskey blind craft whiskeys. 
Uh, and then I'm out of craft whiskey. So that's going to take me to 64 on my journey to 100. So I don't want to beg. I will request without shame. I'm going to do it right now. Um, <clears throat> if anybody's holding out some craft whiskeys that they were like, hey, yeah, I'd like to send you some to taste. That would be amazing. Slide into my Instagram DMs because, uh, yeah, 64 is not 100. Um, I will procure others through means. Um, but yeah, goal is to get to 100. And we are uh, not quite five months in. So we got plenty of time. But if you want to help me out, that would be delightful. One last piece of news before we get to these uh, weeded, this weeded bourbon taste off. If you are a Patreon supporter and you started supporting in February or March, I got your three month uh, thank you gift thing that is promised out in the mail, except for Eric, who I'm going to deliver his uh, locally because he lives locally, going to hand it off. So uh, you should be getting that in the next like week to 10 days. I did send it out USPS first class because it's like five bucks cheaper per shipment. That's a lot of money. Um, Tom, yours, because it had a little something else in it, um, will come priority mail and you should get it very, very soon. I was going to check the tracking on it today. But let me know when you get that. All right, Kyle's dropping some flavor notes here. Uh, which one did you open first, dude? Because I see nose... Is oak, clean fruit, apple pie, vanilla. I'm going to assume that's the apple brandy finished bourbon. Flavor, spice, vanilla, soft fruit, slight pecan, marshmallow. All those are flavor notes that I'm just loving. I'm loving hearing loving hearing about it from you. Yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Which one? Just confirm for me that that's the apple brandy finished one. Say hey to people in the chat. We got W. Wilson uh, blowing people up here, smoking a cigar, waxing my car, watching the bourbon tube. That sounds like a killer night, dog. Like, way to go. You're crushing it, living life. Fred, classic. Friend, friend of the pod, as they say. This is not doing your picks tonight. It's 80 degrees here in Connecticut, so I'm enjoying some Kentucky meals. Nice. You know what? Uh, I love a good old-fashioned with a big old ice cube. Um, doesn't suck at all. Um, I'm not much of a, not much of a cocktail guy, but an old fashioned is nice. And a Kentucky mule, um, especially if you've just got some bourbon, you got to get through mules, a pretty good way of getting through it for sure. Uh, Dan L what's up, dude. Welcome to the chat. Wendy Miller. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. All right, so Kyle, you know, he's dropping these notes. He said it's this uh, pick we did at Starlight, the apple brandy finished bourbon, five-year-old, 112.2 proof. Says the nose is magical. I feel it will open up a bit uh, more with time, too. All right, good. I'm glad you're liking it that much. I cannot wait to open it, but I will wait until next week. For now, let's get into some weeded whiskeys. Specifically, the maker's taste off. If you want to see, some other people have done this taste off. Uh, we talked a little bit about it on the pod with Dave Jennings, Rare Bird 101. He had an opinion of which one he liked better. I'm going to try and not let that taint my, my thinking. Um, Dixon Deadman of Kentucky Owl, well, soon to be formerly. The artist formerly known as Dixon Deadman of Kentucky Owl. Uh, he had done a tasting on his channel of these side by side. And then I think uh, Bourbon Junkies may have done one as well. So a lot of people have done this, but hey, I mean, 57 of you have tuned in to hear what I think about it, which I appreciate. Thank you. I'm glad to hang out with you guys. So I opened this one, and I wanted to make sure I did it before I killed last year's SEO for PR5, the 2020, against the 2021. Have not tried the 2021 yet, and here we're going to do a fresh bottle pop. Fred says, had an awesome old-fashioned last night with Russell's Reserve. Love Russell's Reserve at a restaurant. So much so I had to. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, if you're out at a, a restaurant, and particularly if I'm like on a date with my wife, I'll always get two drinks because how often do I get out with my wife? Not often enough, especially like with COVID. That I mean, it sucked. We didn't go on a date for a year. So thankfully, we did get out recently, right before and then right after baby, actually. Hopefully soon again. Uh, Tim Robertson, Weller 107. Oh, sorry. Hopefully you caught that. That was a great bottle pop. Weller 107 is my recent fave, but can't find it anywhere. Yeah, it's really hard to find for sure, unless you're in Ohio. 
Andrew Beck, good question here, dude. What do you consider craft? Is it craft if it is sourced? Is it still craft if they were purchased by a larger company? It's totally subjective. Um, I consider I consider some sourced as craft. Like for instance, uh, Smoke Wagon, they've built their reputation on sourcing and blending some pretty dank barrels of MGP. And a lot of folks have done this. Um, now, I have a whole lot of respect for the people who can move beyond this to crafting their own stuff through distillation and aging. Um, that said, I'm still assessing something like Smoke Wagon as a craft whiskey. Maybe not everybody would do it that way. I'm doing it that way. Um, if I would consider something still craft if they're, um, you know, a small operation, even though they exist under a large like conglomerate, uh, if if it's an independent sort of functionality, if they're blending their distillate with that of a larger distillery, that seems kind of funky. So give me an example and I'll tell you if I think they're craft or not. And my my decision will rule all. Chris King, new subscriber from San Diego. Dude, I want to get out to San Diego. That's super high on my list of vacations I want to take. San, San Diego. <laughs> Spanish for a well, you know, you know what it's Spanish for. Uh, nothing but secondary pricing out here, though. Love your videos, keep it up. Yeah, secondary pricing is the worst, and unfortunately, it seems like it's just just taken off. Kyle's hit me up with some um craft whiskeys, he might be able to send me. Oh, Penelope, Pinhook, yeah. Sounds great. I haven't hit too much Penelope or Pinhook, and I would consider those craft if anybody's wondering. So that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> Zipota Tech. I think that's how you say that. I may have just said a bad word, but he has the question Is the neck pour a myth? Opinions. I've given my opinion on it before. I think the, oh, I just had the neck pour and it was either good or bad is a little bit overhyped. That said, I do have a slightly different experience every time I go back to a bottle. I think it has more to do with the condition of my tongue than actually the chemical makeup of what was in the neck of a particular bottle or the lack of air exposure associated with that. Others would say different. So that's really one of those questions like, is Jack Daniels bourbon? You're going to get a different opinion every time. All right, I'm going to stop reading the chat and let's taste the whiskey because that's what you all are here for get out my fancy entry proof glasses this is what was sent out to patreon supporters again if you've been a supporter at the eight dollar tier or higher for three months this is what you got it's in the mail mm. okay so again i haven't had any whiskey all week um i should probably have a little bit of a calibration pour actually just to get my my palate in the in the zone I don't know which cork came off which bottle. Probably not going to be able to tell from sniffing. So we're going to keep on your right, my left, the FAE01, the 2021, and then the 2020 on my right. This is important we keep them separate because in last week's stream, I got my, uh, my glasses mixed up and had to start over. That was not great. Okay, so... Uh, you know, Fred Minnick's standard, like, palette acclimator, he would say, was Evan Williams Black, which I have, but Elijah Craig is mine. Since I'm coming off of coffee, I ate a highly seasoned grilled chicken for dinner. I'm going to get this palette ready to go, and then we're going to jump into the makers. Fred says he was traveling. Last weekend, picked up some, some stuff he couldn't get around home. That's awesome. Also visited a very cool distillery called Mystic. Hooked me up big time. Nice. Yeah, I find if you just talk to people, you're like, hey, what's going on? Tell me about your thing. They're generally like pretty nice and will give you things. Not that you want to be nice just so they give you things, but hopefully when people are nice to you, you give them things and it kind of goes that way. Oh, um... This will be fun. I've got a buttload of the Keep It Neat shirts still in. 
Uh, you know, I had those available on Etsy. They're actually still there, but I'm going to give one away tonight. I've got pretty much one of every size. Um, so make sure you like the video. If we get to 75 likes on this video, I'll give away a t-shirt. I need to figure out how I'm going to give it away. Stay tuned to that. We'll make it happen though. Somebody's getting a t-shirt, uh, tonight. If you want to see what kind of t-shirt. It's a, it's a nice material. If people, uh, people have bought them. They're uh, pretty rad. Keep it neat. Super simple. You know, I don't want to make anything flashy or gaudy. Something you don't mind wearing out. Share the whiskey love. Showing up nicely. I'm seeing it delayed on the screen here. It looks pretty good. Elijah Craig works for me, man. Any day. Any day of the week. It's uh, it's what I think of when I think of a classic bourbon. It's kind of the one I compare all others to. Evan Williams Black is fine. It's just not quite what I want. It'll work in a pinch, but Elijah Craig will work anytime. Whoa. We don't want to spill anything this early. Wendy says she needs a new t-shirt. Awesome. Well, like this video. We'll get there. Hang with us. Who's Who's to say? Dan L says to be a craft whiskey, technically they need to produce less than 750,000 proof gallons a year and own less than 50% of the DSP. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I know that's like the industry standard. I think you're right, Dan. Um, but I don't, yeah, whatever. Thank you for that. I mean, not whatever. You are correct. Your, your data is correct. But the craft moniker... And Fred Minnick talks about this. Like to do something craft is like to care a whole heck of a lot about what you're doing. Um, invest yourself in your time and be innovative. Like, 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 how do we make this innovative? So there are some huge distilleries that will probably be considered craft in that they really bring a craftsperson's approach to their product. And then there are some small distilleries that are really by the book and maybe shouldn't be considered craft like when i think of craft i think of something that's really high quality and unfortunately a lot of craft whiskey not as high quality either because of poor distillation or just a lack of aging but we'll talk more about craft whiskey in a little bit okay maybe i shouldn't add coffee i know that some people get coffee notes out of the fae01 but coming out of coffee into whiskey, it's a bit of a palate killer, maybe. That's why we start with Elijah Craig. It also maybe doesn't help that I haven't had any whiskey at all for a week. Five days, actually. Um, so even the Elijah Craig feels a little bit hot on the palate right now. Regardless, we're going to do this. I promised it, so here we go. This side, 2020. This side, 2021. Allergies are really bad, too, so I'm, I just feel like an unprepared taster tonight. Tom digging up that uh, link for the t-shirts. Thanks, Tom. Man, I mean, Tom is an extraordinary admin. Uh, Trev over at the Bourbon Wrench, he admins for a lot of whiskey tubers. He's a great guy. I, I put Tom up against him. I would. All right. Uh, the 2020, very intense nose. I get black pepper. I want more sweetness out of it, but it's got brown sugar in there. I'm plenty of like charred oak. Like this, it, it feels spicy and in your face. Maybe some under, it's got some softer presence. You got to look for it. You got to like get up, get up underneath it. You get some vanilla or caramel. The 2021 on the nose. John White says he had his t-shirt on today. Tour guide at the distillery wanted to know where he got it. Made a cold brew coffee mead best. Oh, made a cold brew coffee mead. Best mead I have made to date. Man. Sound like a cool guy. That's awesome. <laughs> Which distillery were you at, John? Uh, the 2020. 
2021, sorry, we did 2020, 2021 knows is sweet as all get out. Um, I mean, it reminds me some of, uh, it's kind of like the marzipan, the almond candy, uh, like really rich buttercream frosting, dense sugar. Ah, I love it. Um, I mean, it reminds me some of some Elijah Craig uh, barrels that have had a killer, killer nose or not barrels, but uh, barrel proof batches. I'm not getting a ton because I think my nose is just not working great today, but this is super sweet. I'm just going in for the palette. I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Let's start with the 2020. The black pepper transitions comes in comes through i mean it transitions from the nose to the palate get some bubble gum which i don't mind i like it okay cinnamon uh the black pepper kind of lingers it it's it's intense i mean it's it packs some heat even though it's not the hottest bourbon ever we're only talking about 110.8 proof it's really really good but it's just really like, it's kind of a pow. It's like eating a mouthful of Pop Rocks. Uh, a lot of flavor, spicy, not the sweetest thing ever. Nothing bad though. Not, we don't have bitterness. The finish hangs out. So it's not a, it's not a one trick pony. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I'd probably pick up coffee out of this one if I hadn't just had a buttload of coffee. So Shame on me. 2021. Little palate cleanse here. Oh my gosh, Fred. Fred says, when you started your channel, I think I remember you said you had like 48 bottles in your bar. How many are you up to now? We can talk about that in a little bit. I'm up to about 200 bottles. This is Fred talking, not me. My wallet is feeling it. I imagine. I actually did a count the other day because I was curious. Um... It has been an aggressive growth year for my bar, but I'm not up to 200. Uh, I'll I'll share. When we get to the t-shirt giveaway part. I'll share how many bottles I have in my bar. Enough to share some when people come over, which uh, for some locals, uh, I, a lot of church friends, actually. I'm going to do it like church friends whiskey night, and then I'm going to do like a broader uh, whiskey night here since I'm fully vaccinated and the baby's here. So it's time for some whiskey nights. Time to drink some of this whiskey, no doubt. John said he was at Greenbrier in Nashville. Dude, awesome. I want to get there. I popped, I don't know if you were watching, but I popped there. Where is it? Oh, yeah. The Nelson Greenbrier Tennessee whiskey a couple of streams ago. Um, and it's pretty good. It's young, but it's got a killer nose on it and a lot of potential. And, of course, I love Bell Mead. I think Bell Mead's really, really phenomenal, especially for the price point. Like, I feel like they could charge a lot more. But that Bell Mead Reserve for 60 to 70 bucks, barrel-proof, six to eight-year MGP, that's killer deal. 2021, Maker's Limited Release. Here we go. It is sweeter. Still some uh, notes reminiscent of bubblegum. I get more fruit out of this one. I get honey crisp apples. Why do I say honey crisp? Because it's a sweet apple, not terribly tart. Uh, you know, some like the uh, Fuji, really, really tart apple. Honey crisp, not so much. Super, super sweet. Sometimes in a bourbon, I'll get red delicious apple, which is apple-ish but less less sweet i get that note in coffee a lot too red delicious apple not a big fan of the red delicious it's not bad just on this grand scale of apples i wouldn't go red delicious uh plenty of brown sugar not getting a lot of caramel. 
out of this one. Like we're not talking about caramel bombs. Get some allspice. Um, a little bit of like powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, some lighter stuff. Comparing these two, if I was going to use coffee terminology, it's like a dark roasted coffee and a medium roasted coffee. We're never going to have a light roasted coffee compared to bourbon because light roasted coffee is just super juicy and, and very citrus forward. Yeah, I take it back. We might have a light roasted coffee when it comes to bourbon. I just might not like it. Um, I love light roasted coffee. Don't get me wrong. The analogy is falling apart. But if I had to like align these things to something that my palate is very familiar with, dark roasted coffee in the 2020 makers, medium roasted coffee with a little sugar added in the 2021. I'm gonna give these a minute and then I'm gonna hit them again. Because I like the like I like the bold, punchy 2020. Um, you know, there's there are nights that call for that for sure, particularly if you're pouring in a fat bottom glass. Which remember, guys, the nine-month giveaway or the nine-month thank you gift for Patreon supporters is a fat bottom glass. You know, it's very crude, but that um Queen song, Fat Bottom Girls, is just a banger. It's a total banger. Um, catchiest thing ever written. And uh, I love it. I play it. I feel a little weird playing it around my wife because it's obscene. But man, is it a good song. This isn't like super fat bottom glass, but... I mean, is anybody feeling me? I mean, like, do you, can you relate to the... The issue of the Queen song. Brian Hunter, what's your famous Remus repeal batch for? Uh, three is very good, but four is a little bit deeper, a little bit older. So it feels like it spent a little bit more time in the barrel. Comparable age, actually, to batch three, but uh, it feels like it has some more oak influence, which I appreciate. 87 people in the chat. Hey, thanks, y'all. Uh, if you're here and you're enjoying this taste comparison, um, hit the like button. When we get to 75 likes, I'm going to give away a t-shirt, maybe two. That's what we're doing tonight. And then we're going to talk about strategies for drinking less. It's a long game, so it's not on an individual night. Then we're going to taste this blind of five craft whiskeys. So we're 30 minutes into this. Better get after it. I like drinking out of open glasses. I feel like... It helps soften the whiskey's blow. I feel like it makes it a little bit more accessible. Does that make me a professional taster? No, probably not. It probably means that there's something wrong with my tongue. That said, it's just, I feel like I enjoy whiskey more out of fat bottom glass. I feel like with makers... I feel like you can taste the wood better. And I mean that in the best way. Like with rye-based whiskeys, that spiciness complements oak really, really well. But when I'm drinking a cask strength makers or like a makers 46, something that has a lot of like toasty oak influence, I feel like I get sort of this woody, oaky sweetness that, um, you know, I, it's just hard to pick up in a lot of other whiskeys unless they're really, really well aged. And that comes through a lot in the 2020. It's a big, woody, spicy, weeded bourbon. About as spicy of a weeded bourbon as I've ever had. Now, it's definitely not spicy in the rye, caraway sense. It's more in the baking spices. Um, but still spicy as crap. I mean, not actual crap. Hmm. The black pepper finish, while it lasts forever, I wish that that would be softer. I think there's a place for black pepper. I just don't want as much of it as is in the 2020. All right. Let's let this 2021 give it the fat bottom treatment. Tim says he loves Queen. Been listening to it to, since the mid-70s. Well, you sound like a legend, Tim. Total legend. 
John says he uses the Glen Cairn for the first couple of times he tries a whiskey. Once it is familiar, I use a fat bottom glass. That's what I'm talking about. Wendy loves Queen. Awesome. Tim says, not going to date myself, but I'd queen the game on 8-track. Dude, hold on one second. I have... Okay, I found this in the bar when I moved in. Queen the game on freaking 8-track, dog. Check that out. What are the odds of that? I mean, this, this is an 8-track, right? Yeah, I think so. Honestly, I've never played one of these. Like, we were on cassette tapes when I was a little kid. So, pretty sure this is an 8-track. Dating myself as a youth. Silly youths. All right. Um, so, I'm just keeping this now because I love Queen and it's dope. But I listen to Queen all the time. The uh, Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Really moving movie. Um like a total dumpster fire, <laughs> like a mess, <laughs> but really moving, uh, really impactful. Makes you like, uh, um, brings a lot of empathy, I think. All right. Uh, 2021 in the fat bottom glass. How's it open up? Yeah, the sweetness still. It's just like dessert. Uh, creme brulee. Mm. Winner. I mean, this is good. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed this. Wished I had bought another one. But the FAE-01 is uh, is dessert all over. Creme brulee, I think it's a really good way of describing it. Um, maybe creme brulee with a touch of tiramisu. Get a little espresso in there. A little uh, baked cookies. Like toasty cookies on top of a creamy custardy base. Really nice. Now here's gonna be the struggle. Save this. Is as good as this is. Now we're gonna bring in what I would have said is my favorite weeded whiskey. Granted, this is not a limited release, but it might as well be because it is impossible to get in Wisconsin. I had to trade for this bottle. Thankfully, I have a backup now, thanks to a good friend. Um, so let's taste it, and we'll go side by side. We'll just go straight to the fat bottom glass. And hit a little Weller 107 against Maker's 2021 Private Release FAE-01. It's a great-looking bottle, too. I'm so glad they went away from the screw tops, which screw tops... Not a bad thing for keeping bourbon fresh. Corks kind of suck for that. Um, that said, this looks dope with the gold foil. And sometimes it just matters that things look dope. Tom, if I miss something in the chat, if you could just help me, you know, call it out and say like, oh, somebody asked a question. So I'll look for yours. And then folks, just a reminder, if you have a question or want me to talk about something, happy to do that. We have a real loose agenda tonight. So just make sure you at me at Drew P Whiskey. That way it'll show up big and orange for me. So I can be like, oh, yeah, you just said something. Let me read it. Um, very, very helpful. A couple things before I get to the Weller 107. Reminder, if you, if, you know, if you dig the channel, if you like the videos I drop on Mondays, well, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, if you like the podcast, entryproofpodcast.com, if you want access to dope barrel picks like this, you want to support both the channel and the pod, check us out, patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast. It's in the show notes below. Um, that's one way you can support the channel. Another way would be to send me craft whiskey samples so I can hit this goal of 100 craft whiskeys. Much appreciated. Another way um, is to drop a super chat, actually. There's like a little dollar sign down below the chat um, where you can say whatever you want to say, but you can put a little money on there. All of that stuff just goes to support the channel. Put a lot of money into like the travel associated with the barrel picks, the equipment, like gone from nothing to a lot of stuff related to equipment to try and make dank videos. Now we're trying to get some more barrel picks lined up. One out in Washington one out in Ohio, um, and then one here in Wisconsin, which uh, costs associated with that are very minimal. That said, 
if, if you want, if you like the content, you want to see it keep flowing, that's a great way to help. All right. Weller 107, let's go. The Weller 107 has always been very, very sweet. It's not nearly so spicy as the Makers 2020, and it's brighter than the Makers 2021. So it's very sweet, but it reminds me more of like agave nectar and plums versus this like really rich creme brulee that I was getting out of the Makers 2021. So yeah, I'm getting a plummy, stone fruity essence, agave nectar. Honey. Like a high, high quality honey. If you've never done a honey tasting, worth doing. Um, go to the grocery store, buy some like bull crap industrial honey, buy like standard, I don't know, what's the standard honey brand? But then go in like the health food section or craft foods, get some like two or three different kinds of local honey, try them all. It's unbelievable. Like the taste difference and the nuances in honey. You could, I mean, we could create droopy honey, like based on the amounts of, or the different kinds of honey that are out there, what the bees are like sucking from what kind of flowers. They're doing it on, I guess, you know, it has a big impact on the honey. So, uh, really interesting. I just recommend it. I leave that to you all. This is a higher quality, like some honeys can be really fruity, very bright, almost acidic versus like industrial um, honeys kind of taste like they were aged in cardboard. It's what you tend to find. This feels like one of those more floral citrusy honeys. Uh, just really, really lovely. Lighter for sure than the Makers 2021. Try and pick a winner out of these two now. I just wish Weller 107 was always on the shelf in Wisconsin because I would drink a ton of it. But I probably wouldn't care as much if I had to always get it. This is the, the problem with uh, the bourbon boom. It's like some of what we love, we really love because we know it's special. Like that raises its value in our minds for sure. If we could just always go get it. Like there was a time I could always go get Henry McKenna. Did I always have it? No. I mean, I have that a lot. But I didn't always have it because I figured I could always go get it. Now I can't always go get it. So I'm like, oh, yeah, it's special to drink Henry McKenna now. Mm. Uh, winter is still going to be Makers 2021 because the, the oaky depth, the richness feels like it's aged longer. It's really phenomenal. Uh, I wish I could taste it. Right now, next to a William LaRue Weller, which is, of course, the super premium ultra aged weeded Buffalo Trace product, which I have had before, and it's really good. But this Makers 2021 FAE 01 is fantastic, super good. Um, handily beats the 2020, which is really good, and, and beats not like destroys, but it's pretty like, oh, yeah, I like the 2021 better than the Weller 107. So I'm very glad to have this bottle. We'll very much enjoy it. And if you have a shot of getting the Makers 2021 Special Edition FAE-01, which they're supposed to release later this year, FAE-02, which hopefully is as good. But don't wait. Get the Dash 01 if you can. It bears my stamp of approval. Not literally. It's definitely figurative. All right. Let's clean up a little bit. Put these bad boys back there. Put this guy away. Go back to the 2020 here for a second. Going back to the 2020 and the nose. Man, the spicy. It smells great. 
I dare say the nose on the 2020 is better than the palette. Not that the palette sucks. Dan Barber says, OWA is a shelf turd here in Montana. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I hate to read that kind of stuff. By the way, I'll be in Chicago in June, possibly Kenosha for a day. Where should I hit for bourbon? Well, my bar uh, would be one. If you play golf, um, play some golf. If you don't play golf, that sucks. Uh, possibly Kenosha. You should go up to Racine and go to Timers in Racine. Or if you're going between Chicago and Kenosha, there's a place just over the border. I want to. Oh, why am I forgetting what that place is called? <sighs> Shoot balls. Hold on. I'm going to look it up for you, Dan. I'm going to be a hero. You're going to thank me later. Uh, Google. going to take a second. Ah, oh, crap. Wait for it. All right, it's just over the border. I've got the Google Maps open. Somebody's probably already commented it. Oh, it's Antioch. It's like Antioch Fine Wines or something. Yeah, Antioch Fine Wine and Liquors. It's in Antioch. You're going to have to get off the highway. It's going to take you probably about 20 minutes out of your way each way, maybe 30. But if you want good store picks, good selection, that's a place you should stop. If you're going to go by Lake Geneva, you should go by Amman's. Awesome spot in Racine. I mentioned timers, so it's a few options, places that will hook you up, get some dank store picks for sure. And then if you happen to make it all the way to Milwaukee or you want to play golf, um, you know we can have some drinks, play some golf, and be dank. Matt Schwanda, Droopy Whiskey. I was able to get FAE-01 and Makers 46 cask strength at retail over the past month. Love what Makers has been doing. Yes, Makers doesn't get enough love, but they're starting to get more love because they're actually starting to release more than one product. Good on them. I would love Makers to actually release a like ultra-aged product. Like, Give us an age statement. Like, Come on. You can do it. It won't kill you. That'd be awesome. People would be all over that. Fred says, ironically, I've not liked Maker's Mark, but I've enjoyed immensely Maker's Mark 46 and Cask Strength. That's fine. My folks live in Antioch and Salem, says Dan. Well, or lived in Antioch and Salem. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, Urantia Book Omaha. My current craft favorite is by Bluegrass Distillers, their Kentucky Straight Bourbon Weeded Whiskey. Not had it. Not had it. Thanks for the tip. Hmm. Guys, I could just sip this 2021 really slowly and moan into the microphone. Just do that for the next hour. I mean, I might not get a lot of engagement. It may not be very appreciated, but I could do it. Maybe that'll be a special video I do around Christmas or something. It was a pretty awesome video of uh, Nick Offerman who plays Ron Swanson in Parks and Rec. He also a Lagavulin partner or something. I'm not sure what his role is or his relationship with Lagavulin. Similar to Matthew McConaughey and uh, Wild Turkey, I think. There's like an hour-long video of him drinking whiskey in front of a fire, and it's awesome. I mean, I should just put it on. I got a TV over there. I should just put it on right now and sit here and drink with Nick Offerman. He would not moan, though. Uh, it's very out of character for him. Very much a man's man um which i would probably not be bourbon tech drew p love your channel thanks dude appreciate it keep up the good work if you're ever on the east coast delaware let me know uh i hope to travel a lot in the years to come that's sort of one of my goals and my wife loves to travel we have three kids so it will be a total total crap show but i mean it's going to be a crap show regardless when you have three kids. So it might as well be a crap show somewhere cool. So I will endeavor to remember that. Or I'll just post on Instagram. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. Tim says he can still get McKenna, but it's up to 59 at his local store. Yeah, it's a tough call, man. Uh, eventually, so I'm, I've started this new series of like what bourbon should I buy? And I'm going to go distillery by distillery. This Monday, I'm going to finish Buffalo Trace. And then I'll probably do Beam next. Then Heaven Hill, 
We'll see. It's going to be a long series. But Henry McKenna is a tough one because you used to be able to get it for 30, you know. Now I see it for 40 to 50, and it still feels reasonable. We're talking about a 10-year-old, really well-made, bottled and bond, single barrel. So if you're like, well, what if somebody else released that? Well, if a craft distillery released that, we're talking about $250. <laughs> if Jim Beam releases it, well, they have it every day. 120 proof, single barrel, nine-year Knob Creek. That's like 40 to 50. So like the value from the big distillers is in that $50 range, I think, like these days. But when you compare it against what smaller distilleries are charging for comparable products, it feels like it should be worth more than that. So I'm totally fine at 50 these days. 60 feels like a push. It may not feel as like as big of a push in the future. If Henry McKenna would rebrand, like guys, I mean... This is still just a hideous bottle. It's wretched. It's terrible. Um, this green and gold and this beige, like it's marketing out of the 90s. It's awful. Um, and uh, so they need to rebrand. If they would rebrand, it's an $80 bottle. I feel like we wouldn't hesitate to pay that. That said, just given the overall aesthetics, I think that's what's causing us to be like, eh, I think the overall quality, people will hate on this. It's hard to hate on it. I have had a bottle where I was like, it's not very good. That was one out of like five. And some of them have been amazeballs. This one, very, very good. So I'm still in at 50. That's a preview of that episode. 60, if I needed it, like if I'm like, oh, I'm on down to my last bottle, I can get another one at 60. Yeah, I'll probably buy it. 70 is a push because I know I can get uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof at 70. Well, I was able to get Elijah Craig Barrel Proof at 70. I haven't seen one yet this year. It was released all over Milwaukee, pretty much every release for the last couple of years. But now I haven't seen Batch A or Batch B in uh, in and around Milwaukee. I haven't heard of anybody seeing it, actually. I'm curious to try Batch B. We're totally off topic now, but Fred Minnick dropped a steaming dump on Elijah Craig Batch B521. Um it's the low proof one. He said it tasted like burnt. I watched his review. He's like, it tastes like burnt stuff, burnt corn, burnt. It's just burnt, which is, you know, Fred, I generally agree with his palate. Like I find like he and I have some continuity uh, together. Like I tend to be like, oh yeah, I think Fred's right. Um, but I also just wonder sometimes I tend to like lower proof, barrel proof stuff. Because I feel like it's easier for me to taste. It just doesn't burn the crap out of my tongue. But, I mean, he may be 100% right. It may be garbage. The way he talked about it, he was really disappointed. But I still really want to try Elijah Craig Batch B521. So I'd probably buy one, even after the bad review if I saw it. But it's not here. Anybody else had that? Anybody had Elijah Craig Batch B521? Fred says he hasn't heard positive stuff around it from his local groups. Has anyone had it, though? There's 95 people watching. Somebody's probably had Elijah Craig batch B521. It's all a conspiracy, man. Terrence said e A121 was amazing still. That's good. He said B521 was handed to me when I walked in my normal shop. 80 bucks left it behind for barrel seed grass. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. This is my bourbon podcast. Perry says he has had it, and it's great. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Do uh, you care to elaborate, my dog? I would love to hear some other thoughts about it. Like, why do you think Fred did not like it? Do you know? Did he just have a bad palate day? Which we all have. Uh, Perry says he has a bottle. I know it's lower proof, but it drinks super well. You're a fan. Cool. All right. That's all I needed to hear. I really want to try it because it's like the lowest Elijah Craig barrel proof proof ever. So I'm I'm jacked for it. I'm ready to go. All right. You guys ready to transition? Move on to the next topic here. We're only going to spend like 20 minutes on this, but I'm interested to get your thoughts. So I mentioned around the time my daughter was in the hospital, just had a baby. Um, you know, it's the kids go to bed. So here's how the day looks right now. Get up, go to work, do the work thing, sometimes work at home. 
for you know eight hours and uh, you know help maybe get the kids lunch in the middle of that as best I can uh, and then finish help the wife get dinner ready get cleaned up get the kids in bed that's like eight eight thirty if the kids went down it was just like spent and what's an easy thing to do when you're spent you want to relax drink bourbon particularly if you like bourbon you crave bourbon you talk about bourbon it's your thing so I've been drinking a lot of bourbon. Again, not like massively to excess, but too, too much to the point where I'm like, this is probably not sustainable to drink two, three good sized pours in an evening, putting on a little weight. Granted, that's, you know, it's relative. But for me, I just like I want to be healthy. You know, I don't really want to take chances, unnecessary chances with my health. So I was like, okay. I need to drink less. Let's think about how to do that. For me, if I'm like, I'm going to have one drink, like I'm, I'm going to pour a little bit. It's hard to do because it tastes so good. I have very low self-control. I want to go back and get some more. <laughs> it doesn't really work as well. So I just started to think about what are some strategies for drinking less? If you hear the baby crying, it's because the baby's crying. It happens. Sometimes my wife has to put her down. She's a really temperamental baby. And I don't fault my wife for leaving a crying baby because it just gets to be a lot. She's very healthy. She's just very needy. Uh, like my daughter, my other daughter. So I have two daughters. My first daughter, who is three, uh, as a baby, is super needy. She wanted to be held all the time. And unfortunately, second daughter, same, same story. So not what we needed, but what we got. So back to drinking less. I was like, how... How might we drink less? Well, because just simply like having a tiny little bit every night is probably not an option for me and my minimal self-control. I was like, okay, well, we're going to we're going to go without drinking. But here's the thing about going without drinking. Uh, if I just said I'm not going to drink for 30 days, that gets to be tough. Like looking forward to that next drink of bourbon 30 days down the road. It's just like, that seems unnecessary. Like the goal is to drink less. It's not necessarily to not drink at all. So 30 days while well, I've done that before, I always hate myself uh, in the midst of that because I don't feel like I need it for the alcohol. I just want to have bourbon. I really, really like it. It's like one of the things, <laughs> treat yourself, right? It's like one of life's simple joys in the midst of utter chaos. Um, so why withhold, you know, you feel, I almost feel like you're, you're just promoting maybe the binge a little bit more. It's eating is kind of the same way. Like if you struggle with overeating or comfort eating, withholding like dieting often doesn't work for people who, who really, you know, go for, uh, we'll call them passion eating. Um, because then you just end up like you, you end up binging instead of like enjoying your, your vice in a, in a healthy format. Drinking can be very much the same way. So uh, the goal would be like, hey, how do we enjoy this in a way that's healthy while drinking less, while knowing that if I drink a little bit, I'm prone to drinking more? Well, the plan for me was one night a week. So Thursday night live streams. We're going to taste some whiskeys. We normally do that. It'd kind of be awkward for me to get here, talk about whiskey, not have any whiskey at all. Probably make it a little more difficult too. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. Like I can look forward to the one night a week over the next month where I, uh, you know, I can have a couple pours, enjoy hanging out with you guys, talk about the whiskey, analyze the whiskey, and I'll really enjoy it. I'm like, okay, this is doable. Totally was too. I mean, there were a couple nights, a couple hard nights getting the kids to bed where I'm like, dang, I could use a bourbon. We'll talk about that in a second. But knowing that, hey, Thursday's gonna come and that'll be fun. I've got some, you know, I got golf on Saturday. Um, so I got a couple of things I can look forward to. Those are helpful things that make you not feel like you're being unnecessarily withholding on other days. <sighs> But there are still those days where you're like, oh, dang, I crave it. You know, like if you're trying to fast, you're trying to go without for a little while. There are those days where you're just like, well, dang, I really want I really want some bourbon right now. What do you do to try and keep yourself from the temptation? Well, you're not going to wear a chastity belt over your mouth. Um, 
so oral stimulation is helpful. We're going to try and get this from being too like double entendre ish. <laughs> but for me, I always like I get bored. And so what do I do? I either snack or I drink bourbon or I need to put something else in my mouth. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. <laughs> Bottom line is find something that you can sip that is enjoyable. It may not be the same thing as bourbon whiskey, um, but something that you can really, really enjoy. For me, there's a couple of things like tea is fine. It's not my favorite thing ever, but a dank decaf coffee like I was drinking tonight from Stone Creek Coffee. You guys know it. Um, that's helpful. You know, it's helpful to engage the oral senses. Man, this sounds so bad. I'll get over it. I'm a child in, in my soul. Um, it's a helpful way of just like moving past the need to drink bourbon. Another thing is for my wife's Mother's Day, not for her birthday. That's coming up. I haven't got her the thing yet for her birthday. But for Mother's Day, I got her a soda stream, which I love carbonated beverages. Like it doesn't matter what it is, just carbonated water. I and I understand some people think that's not their thing, but for me, carbonated water, LaCroix, love it. So I'm just been slamming, slamming carbonated water. Just as a thing to drink in the evening if I'm working or like I'm uh, watching TV or something. It's something to do, something to put in my body <laughs> versus drinking bourbon or like slamming potato chips. So like a couple like my my strategies here, relatively simple, is if you need to drink less, don't try and go without drinking unless you're an alcoholic sometimes you got to go without like don't get me wrong if you every time you drink you drink to get drunk you need to just stop drinking you need to turn off this channel it's not for you that's okay there are other things for you like golf um but not alcohol so if you drink to get drunk you can't drink without getting drunk don't drink that's the time you say no if you're like i need to dial it back for my health i need to dial it back because i don't really want to be like consumed by this don't just turn it off because you'll find yourself going back to it in excess because you're like, I can't have it. I can't have it. I got to have it. Just have it, but schedule it. Say, I'm going to have this much. And then the next step is tell somebody. Like I told my wife, like, hey, listen, you know, I don't feel like it's a problem for me right now, but I, I realize I need to dial it back. So I'm telling you. So, you know, on those nights where I'm like, you know that I'm not supposed to drink. So I just don't go downstairs and grab a big glass because I'm, you know, trying to hold myself accountable. Think about human nature. You never hold yourself accountable. It just doesn't work. We're, we don't really like have that level. I don't know anybody who has that level of self-discipline when they want something that's bad for them. They just get it. Like that's what we do. Um, so I'm recommending that you tell your significant other, your bro, your roommate, whatever. Um, hey, um, I'm drinking less now. Here's one I can drink. So if they see you drinking, they're like, dude, what are you doing? Stop drinking. What? Like, you might have a problem at that point. So, yeah. And then the other thing is find something to replace what you're taking out. Um, it's like if you're trying to stop smoking. Like, very rare is it that somebody just stops smoking. It's normally they replace it. You know, it's a habit that they're trying to build and it's doing something for them. You need to find something else to do that thing for you. For me, I drink and eat out of boredom or, or because I want to be entertained and stimulated. So what is going to replace that for me? Well, bubbly water or tea. Again, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but it's better than nothing. That's it. That's it. That's my sermon for the evening. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure there's thoughts in here, but I didn't write any of that down. Just speaking from the head, the heart. Thought it would be helpful. You know, I mentioned in videos like this in the past that, uh, you know, if I'm going to have a whiskey channel, I want to be a proponent for like healthy consumption because there's a lot of like flaunting and selling over consumption. And I think that's dumb. I think it's super dangerous. I don't think it's good. And I wouldn't hesitate to be like, Hey, you shouldn't do that. Like a channel that's trying to like grow through flaunting over consumption, probably not a great plan. Probably going to do more harm than good. Normalizing alcoholism. I don't want to be responsible for killing people. So that's why we talk about this stuff. I might have to run upstairs in a minute. The baby sounds mad, and I might have to bring the, the baby on the channel. We'll see. Again, family first, so you guys would just have to talk amongst yourselves if we get that 
that way, that would be fine with me. All right, we're at 81 likes. So somebody may have been, uh, yeah, it looks like Fred and Tom were pumping you guys up. All right, what would be a, a fair way to do this? Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to come up with a bourbon trivia question or a channel trivia question. And the first person to get the answer, that feels fair, gets a T-shirt. I'll do two. I'll do two T-shirts. Um, now I got to think of a trivia question. Oh, man. All right. I'll think about it while we prep this craft whiskey blind. Mm. 2021 in the house. Had all this good whiskey and glasses. This is some of the Elijah Craig I started with tonight. I don't want this stuff to go to waste. All right. Let's start with a question for Droopy Whiskey Super Pans. I may have dropped this. I think I may have dropped this Drew, Drew fact. It has nothing to do with whiskey, but I figure if you know this much about me, then you deserve a t-shirt. In what city was I born? If you can drop it in the chat, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Then, uh, I, yeah, again, I think you deserve a t-shirt. So if you know what city I was born in, guests are welcome if you happen to land on the city. Then you're going to get a t-shirt. I'll come up with a whiskey question after that. I'll give you guys a hint. I'm not from Wisconsin. <laughs> Lucas Banner says Texas. I am from Texas. That is correct. I grew up in Texas. Does that mean I was born in Texas? I grew up in Texas. Bozeman, Montana. Nice. Kyle says Dallas. Nope. Dallas is big, too. I would ask for more specificity than Dallas. Most people aren't born in downtown Dallas. It, <laughs> like an Air Force brat uh, like myself would probably be like McKinney or Plano. Not even that area. <laughs> All these Texas cities now. Indy, Houston, El Paso, Lubbock, Cincinnati, Austin. Nope. I'll think of a whiskey question here while you guys keep sat. My mom was born in Plano. Um, I was not. Uh, I like DFW. It's got a lot to offer. I wouldn't want to spend a lot of time there, but it's good for a day trip. Um, I love to go to the ballpark in Arlington. Um, uh, Hello, it's bourbon. Yeah, I, I probably gave too many hints there. Hello, it's bourbon drops to San Antonio. That is correct. Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. That's when I was where I was born. September 29th, 1989. I'm not going to give you my social security card or number. Uh, Brian Hunter, Wichita Falls. Wichita Falls is where I grew up. That is not where I was born. So uh, apparently I had not mentioned that on any of the videos. Somebody else may have remembered it. But yes, San Antonio, Texas. So uh, hello, whatever your name is, or however you pronounce that. I'm sure there's some significance behind that that I just do not understand. But slide into my Instagram DMs, and I'll hook you up with, with a T-shirt. Um, all right, now let's do some Drew P. Whiskey trivia. Um, oh, okay, here's a really good question. I know I've talked about this either on the Instagrams or on the YouTubes. What was the first whiskey I had that was more like premium whiskey? Could be American whiskey, Could could be not. That was like, oh yeah, that's uh yeah, that's that's interesting. Like that that's causing me to go deeper into that world. Oh, hello says uh hello is just outside San Antonio. So what whiskey was it for me that caused me to be like, oh, this is really, really interesting. Booker's Rye was the American whiskey that like caused me to like pursue whiskey as a passion, but it wasn't the first one that opened me up to the world. So Eagle Rare is one of my favorites. Definitely a go-to. Um, but nope. Yeah, you guys you guys are on the Booker's that it was like, oh yeah, Booker's Rye was like the, the thing that got me on American whiskey. Um, but not what opened me up to the whiskey world.
Lots of lots of good guesses, but they're pretty general. Fred is getting warmer. Fred says it was a scotch, and Fred is correct that it was a scotch. This is fun. Fred can't remember. What scotch was it? People are searching Google right now. Droopy whiskey scotch. <laughs> and the baby is really having a hard time. Jameson, no. I said it was a scotch. Jameson's an Irish whiskey. McAllen 12 is great, but nope, it wasn't that. Open 18 is wonderful, but it wasn't that. You guys are going to have to be specific when it comes to distilleries. <laughs> Tom starts writing Broikladic. <laughs> Broikladic is one of the most absurd distillery names. It was not that. Highland Park 12, very good. Wasn't that. Balvenie, good distillery. You're not being specific, but it wasn't Balvenie. You got to give me the release. Wichita Falls, Joseph Kearns. <laughs> That's where I'm from again. <laughs> not the scotch that got me turned on. Nobody, like Lagavulin, again, you guys are naming distilleries. That'd be like me saying Heaven Hill. Like, I, And granted, you guys, like me, are all bourbon geeks. Uh, Elro, Ja Victor really n nailed it on the head here when it said, don't know scotch. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm sure you can find this through a Google search. Like I, I mentioned, Fred says baby is quiet. Hopefully baby isn't getting picked up by the mic too much. I'm going to search here, Drew P. Whiskey, scotch. See what comes up here. Yep. Yeah. No, you can find it through a very simple Google search. The first one to to do so. Droopy whiskey scotch. You're probably gonna figure it out pretty quick. I'll leave you to it. We'll check back and see who gets it in a minute. But again, be specific on which exact whiskey it was. And then when I call you out for getting it right, you can cite it in my DMs. Uh, not Johnny Walker, Blue, not McAllen 25, not had McAllen 25. That would be amazing. Christopher M., a suddenly quiet child may not be a good thing. Um, true. Sounds like my wife's like trying to get some food together. Again, my daughter, like she just doesn't want to be put down. She's totally fine. She's just temperamental. Doer's white label? Ew. No. Oh, um, Dewar's white label is the one. <laughs> so yeah, the doc um, did a Google search uh, and got close. Um, Dewar's white label is the first scotch I ever tried. Pulled it out of my dad's closet. Um, and it was like probably super old. That was not actually the one that I was like, uh, that the first one I tried that was like, oh yeah, this is, this is quite good. It was the first one I tried out of curiosity. Um, after watching MASH, you guys read the thing. Uh, <laughs> I may have misled you guys. I'm going to look up that that article here and see if I had mentioned the other one. in Because I wrote a thing. <sighs> oh, yeah. No, it's there. It's in that same article for those of you who found the article. There we go, Kyle Ramage. Uh, but Kyle, I can get you one since you're my friend, uh, or get you something else. Terrence, we're gonna give it to Terrence McDonald, and then I'll hook Kyle up because you know we're we're boys. Um, Tim, so yeah, Terrence. Sorry, t yeah, people are getting it now. But Terrence McDonald was the first one to get it. It's the Glen Livet 15 year French oak. So um, I, he was the first one after Kyle to get it. But again. We're going to give it to Terrence. Kyle, you know I love you. You know I'll, I'll, I've got some samples to send you, Kyle. Um, so Terrence, slide into my DMs. Yeah, so my dad for Christmas gave me the Glenn Levitt 15 year, um, which, man, I mean, still a 15, 18 year scotch does it for me. Like, it works. I enjoy it. Um, you know, the price points on those. Bourbon is pretty high, but, you know, the price point on an 18 year scotch is extraordinary even the 15 years like 70 bucks so it's like i guess bourbon and scotch are kind of getting comparable now but a good well-aged scotch is delightful i really enjoy it and that glenlivet 15 
it was mellow enough, you know, it was lower proof, but very, very flavorful. And I drank that bottle too fast. Super enjoyed it. So yeah, Terrence McDonald was the first one to drop it. Thanks everybody for playing. You are uh, delightful individuals and t-shirts go to Terrence and the dude from San Antonio. I assume dude, that was, that's probably sexist of me. I apologize. The person from San Antonio who likes bourbon the place outside of San Antonio. All right. Ready to do some craft whiskey tasting here. I still have people dropping cities in the chat. You guys must be behind in the live. Um, I recommend refreshing your page, making sure you're caught up on the live stream. It happens. I mean, maybe your connection is slow. Maybe you started late. All right. I don't want to do a bunch of... Woo! Jeepers. What I was saying is I don't want to do a bunch of dishes tonight. So I'm just going to rinse my glasses. Is this perfect? Is this is, is this highly cautious, very meticulous tasting? No. No, it's not. But it's just the kind of guy I am. We're going to call these glasses clean. All right. So this is a blind, y'all. We've got six craft whiskeys that were laid out for me by somebody who I do not remember. They may be watching. We're going to figure out who it's from. Um, this was sent to me a while ago, but I had so many, when I started this craft whiskey journey, so many craft whiskeys sent to me, I had to tell people no more until I get through them all. No, I'm through them all and I need your help. Okay. A. B. D. F. E. Here is the key, and I really hope that this uh, tells me who sent it to me, because I forgot. But if you sent me this stuff, my lack of knowing or remembering who you are is not equal to the amount that I appreciate them, because I appreciate them far better and more than I remember your name, which is not at all. Seriously, though. For those of you who have sent me samples, thank you so much. It's really, really been enlightening to taste so many whiskeys from so many distilleries, so I very, very much appreciate it, and I'm a terrible person for not knowing who sent this to me. I tried to keep things and so I could shout out people when they did send me stuff, and I just lost this one. Let me see. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, I don't have it. Darn it. Uh, if you're in the chat and you sent me these samples, or if you watch this video later, again, thank you. Tell me who you were. It is a lot of samples. Six. I'm not going to drink the whole thing. Uh, very generous, too, to send me six samples. It's really just, a, it's really a travesty uh, that I don't know. I don't remember who sent this to me. <sighs> William Wiley, I have about eight different Chattanooga whiskeys I could send you. I'm sure that is crap. Chattanooga is. I've had two Chattanooga whiskeys. I think the standard cask strength and then the less cask strength i liked the cask strength super malty crazy malty i'm totally open to tasting more um six eight different are they eight different single barrels uh dan barber asked me earlier thank you tom for calling this out thoughts on cat's eye distillery in iowa i need to try more of their stuff i have their Polish rye, thanks to a local guy who hooked me up with this, Matty Pletz. We're going to play golf soon. Um, it's amazing. 
And I've heard great things about the NASA Family Reserve. I haven't bought that. I've heard great things about the light whiskey. I haven't had those. There's only so much you can buy. But I've heard amazing things, and I really love that. So that's what I know right now about Cat's Eye. They're doing that stuff is sourced. I don't know about their own distillate. Have not tried anything coming out of there still, if they even have a still. So normally it's tough to do a blind six whiskeys. I may just open the key um, because they're craft whiskeys. Like I'm not bringing a lot of preconceptions to these things. What do I think of Stranahan's? Honestly, uh, La Raj Victor, um, I have not had it. It's one of those ones that I'm like, Colorado whiskey, probably not aged very well. So I've not been tempted to buy it. Um, and I've not tried it, so I can't give you an opinion. I'd like to. Can't do it. Can't do it. Dan, all, oh yeah, okay. All right, all right. Any other questions while I pour these suckers? What I will say is I, I plan on, when I get done with uh, my journey through 100 craft whiskeys, I'm going to make a video, you know, the top five, or, the, you know, what's the best craft whiskey that I tasted? Best craft whiskey in America. I'm probably going to call it that because that's ostentatious. Um, and uh, then I'll also give my top five in that video. So I've been setting aside the ones that really blew me away. Really look forward to making that video, but I'm not going to do it until I'm done with the hundo. Tom Lynch, know anything about Leopold Bros in Denver? I do not. Whiskey Vault just reviewed their three chamber still rye. Sounds spectacular. Interesting. I've never heard of Leopold Brothers. There's so many small distilleries that have popped up or are popping up. Um, it's hard to keep up with them. It really is. It's like trying to drink a craft beer from every new brewery. Now, the downside to these craft operations, we've seen it in craft beer, is some of them don't make it. Like in Milwaukee, quite a few closed. Um, and we'll see what happens with craft distilleries, too. It's hard for me to believe the market will sustain them all in perpetuity. That said, some will make it. You know, New Riff, um, Woodenville. Uh, was the other one in Kentucky? Starts with a W. Whatever. There's some that just crush and they do a great job marketing. They have good connections. Um, and they'll make it, you know, but not everybody's going to make it. And that's a shame. One recently closed in Wisconsin, actually. That one looked dark. Whatever, whatever E is looked pretty dark. Brian Faber said, just heard about Driftless Glen, I think, near you. Yes. Um, some of their single single barrels can be bangers. I'm actually trying to get a barrel for the pod, for the channel, for the Patreon community. Um, I have not reached out to them yet, so when I say trying, that term is held loosely, but it's on my list of places I'd like to do a barrel pick at. Kyle Ramage just blowing up my phone, so if you hear the text messages, that's Kyle. Oh, Wilderness Trail. That was the other W. Yeah. All right. Let's taste these suckers. And again, we'll see how long I can go before I open up the key. But 90 of you watching right now, hey, thanks for hanging out. I know many of you came for the which of these weeded is better. You can go back and watch that earlier in the feed. You can also catch my little uh, sermonette at, at the about hour and five mark on how to drink less. It's important, you know. I'm all for enjoying enjoying whiskey, but I think it's helpful, good, wise, healthy to do in a healthy fashion. So just take a break sometimes. It's good for you. These are small little amounts here, and I'm probably not gonna drink all of this craft whiskey either. Um nose on A is very light. A little aspirin-y uh lemon zest. This smells like a very lightly aged whiskey, um, reminiscent of even a, an American whiskey. Uh, doesn't smell like a well, it could be a rye, 
it's not a weeded bourbon for sure. Like it's it it has rye in it. I would peg it as a bourbon instead of a rye whiskey, but it's very light, like not aged very well along and doesn't smell super high proof either. I'm going to say it's a rye now on the palate. Very rye heavy. It's got some dill. A little bit of parsley. A lot of flavor. A lot of citrus. Very lemony. And does not suck. Doesn't taste like it's been aged very long, but at the same time is both sweet and herbaceously spicy and quite nice. Um... Reminds me of the Limousin Six Year Rye, which I've I've preached the gospel of the Limousin Six Year Cask Strength several times before on this channel, and that's what this a reminds me of. Simple on the nose, but lots of yummy, delicious flavors, even for a young whiskey on the palate. Like A, a lot. Come back to that. <sighs> B, we'll go fast. Um, rich on the nose. Sometimes it's good to smell yourself to clear up the nasal passages. Reminds me of something finished because it's really kind of fruity, laffy taffy, kind of like grape laffy taffy. I want to sit with this one for a while. Uh, maple syrup. This smells crazy sweet. I would bet this one is finished. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm looking forward to opening this key because this is delightful. Um, yeah, I'm just blown away right now. And I feel like even more of a butt wipe for not knowing who sent me these samples. Granted, it was months ago, but I should have kept the name. So just for the record. Droopy whiskey is a butt wipe. Um, nose is phenomenal, sweet and complex. I'm still gonna say it. it uh, it's finished because it's very grapey, but I don't get a lot of young whiskey notes associated with it, and I get a decent amount of oak. Somebody's not messing around. Batch B. So batch A, guessing it's a rye, young but delicious. Batch B, a finished product, sweet and grapey and oaky and very good. Um, C, drink a lot of water here. Okay, we're, we're headed downhill now. Um, this smells like young distillate. And I got this funky kind of nasal property to this one. It's like something biological. Uh, it's a smoke, like it's a, you know, like when you burn something you shouldn't and the smoke coming off of that. That's what this smells like, like the label on a spray paint can when it's on fire. And you know, young, bready whiskey needs more barrel time. That was not very good. Um, there are some things you just don't want to swallow. Um, Try not to spit on somebody's shirt. That was that was bad. Um, that is up there with the worst that I've had. 
Um, Bower Hill was wretched. This one tastes like somebody is making something that ought not be ingested by human beings. It's not peated. That peated one from ASW was was god awful. Uh, I hated that. Oh, squad, my battery's dying. Um, hold tight. I'll keep talking. Yeah, I just spit. I'm gonna clean it up, Brian. Come on, man. All right, hold on. I'm gonna keep talking, guys. Um, the downside with rocking this, you know, new and improved video setup is that it does require um, batteries, you know, that I have to, I can't just hook it on the computer and then it's good. So yeah, that was not good. That whiskey was pretty rough. Um, the Bower Hill I didn't spit out, but I probably should have, Fred. And you know the theatrics on a, a spit motion. Yeah, you know, it's probably more entertaining. Um, and I really don't feel like swallowing that tonight. It's just not my appetite. So hang tight for me. Sorry. For those of you who hang out in the chat while I do this, I mean you're, you're the real heroes here. You can hear me while I do this. Um, what should I talk about while I change my battery? Really coming up with nothing right now. Uh, so tasting notes on that. Um, it's really, really drying. So when I spit something out like that, it's that bad. The mouthfeel is very uh, chemical-y. Um, it leaves your mouth feeling super, super dry. Like you just... Oh, amoxicillin. Um, when I was a kid, I don't remember why, but at some point I had to take like a liquid amoxicillin by mouth, and it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever had. And some awful, poorly distilled whiskeys remind me of said amoxicillin. Um, and that's where we're at, you know, with this particular whiskey and it does have some sweetness associated with it um but it doesn't make up for the medicinal bitter wretched awfulness sorry john for the vertigo but we're good now right we're back all right so see very bad don't want that see i'm gonna remove well just gonna we're not drinking this. This is a no-fly zone. I'll move it forward. All right, D. Hopefully we're on the way up here. Brian says, what four rows of single barrels you got there? Dude, it's one of my favorites too. Um, a few of them. I got a few of them. <laughs> um, that Those are, yeah. I, I tend to drink one at a time, but I drink them at a steady pace. They're getting harder and harder to come by in Wisconsin, so... I have a few backups. I don't feel bad about it, though, because it is my fave. One of my faves. All right. Nose is better on D. Not at A or B level. But we're not at throw up. <sighs> Soft. I'm, I'm, I would call this a weeded bourbon. So, see, I don't care what it is. It's bad. D, I think it's more weeded based on the no nasal profile. Uh, probably five years ish. Hundred proof. Okay. I'm gonna stand by everything I just said, but I get a pronounced green pepper. It's got some maple syrup. It's sweet. It's decent on the nose, but the palate is very green pepper. Me no likey that. Um, so positives and negatives here. I'm giving it another shot. Yeah, the nose is brown sugar. It's like straight brown sugar. Not a lot of complexity, but good. The palate... It's maple syrup up front, and then green pepper and drying. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Not, you know, it makes me a little nervous about the 
quality of the distillate. So I don't think that would be the product of aging or just being young because I don't get that much in young whiskeys. But uh, yeah, that green pepper note's turning me off. So D, not the worst thing ever, but not necessarily recommended. We'll come back to it. After we open it, I'll, I'll hit them all again briefly. All right, on to E. This was the one I poured in. I was like, dang, that's dark. It still looks dark. You can't really see it, but to me, it looks dark. And it smells oaky, which is exciting. <laughs> like for me, uh, something that pours dark, that smells oaky, that doesn't smell like it was like double barreled. Not that double barreled is always bad, but. If you guys watch the channel, you know I do not like Mictor's Toasted Barrel Bourbon. I do like Mictor's Toasted Barrel Rye, but there are some things that are just over-oaked, and it's like licking charcoal briquette. That's no good. That said, you do get some 14, 15-year-old whiskeys that are thick and dark and delicious and don't taste like charcoal briquette, but have plenty of sweet oak presents. That is my jam, 100%. Uh, Discovery Batch 4 from Bardstown Bourbon Company. Prime example of that. This reminds me a little bit of that. <sighs> yeah, I mean, if this is a craft whiskey, I am going to be surprised because it smells phenomenal. And it smells well-aged, doesn't smell finished. Like, I'm not getting funky fruit notes. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting buttercream frosting. I'm getting sweet oak. The brown sugar note that I generally like. <sighs> Remember to breathe. I just inhale a lot sometimes while nosing. Forget to just breathe. This is unbelievable. It's so sweet and syrupy. Somebody gave me a gift. This is delicious. I mean, it does taste like like really high quality maple syrup fresh from the bottle. I mean, it's almost too sweet. Like the sweetness is lingering. Like it's almost like a clawing sweetness. This may be finished in like maple syrup casks. If so, sign me up um, because it's dessert, dessert bourbon. It's got to be finished in something that adds sweetness, either honey or maple syrup, because it is so, I mean, it's so good, guys. But it's got to have some kind of artificial sweetness added to a well-aged product, because I get the oak, but all kinds of sugar, beer sugar. <laughs> um, it's delicious. Whatever it is, I'm here for it, but I couldn't drink a lot of it because it's so sweet. Like, it's maple syrup finished or honey. Honey or maple syrup finished, that's what E is. I'm calling it, and I love it, and it's delicious, and I wish it was a straight bourbon. If it is, I'm blown away, and it's one of the best bourbons I ever had. That said, I don't think it's a straight bourbon, so I'm going to discount it because I know it's finished in something sweetening, but very good. You, you all, Hopefully, you all are like waiting with bated breath in the same way that I am. All right, last one. F, and then we'll give it a rundown. Light, um, perfumey, lemongrass, <sighs> early spring florals. Not bad. White grape, nothing off putting, just light. Okay, this tastes like a youngish rye, but doesn't pack the depth of flavor and sweetness that A does. So these both, A and E, taste like youngish ryes. E may be a bourbon, because it's not as spicy as A, but it's very, very young. Tastes pretty good. Like a decent amount of potential here in E. Destil, it's good. Aging is good, but young. Not a lot of bready notes. Like, really high-quality stuff here. Just young. Um, 
I like this actually. It's not off putting at all. Interesting flavors, just on the lighter end of the spectrum. Good summer pour. E. Either a, a low rye rye or a high rye bourbon use. Let's open it up. I'm I'm jacked to figure out what these things are. That was a fun tasting. Whoever sent it to me again. I hate myself. Like, um, you know, this is causing some personal shame that I didn't write down. The very kind and generous person who gave this to me. And it's not written down here. All right. This is awesome. Really interesting. All right. A. I said rye. It's not rye. But it's definitely rye forward, which I was surprised. I wouldn't have guessed this based on the marketing. But A. <coughs> is barrel dovetail. So barrel craft spirits. Dovetail. And I don't remember 100% what dovetail is. But let's look this up. Ooh, that one, I swallowed that one a little wrong. Burned me a little bit. Okay. Dovetail is blended to highlight some of our favorite flavors. This is from the barrelbourbon.com website. Am I 21 or over? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's quite the firewall there. Woody bourbon, terroir-driven Dun Cabernet, toasted French oak, late bottled vintage port pipes, black strap molasses casks, all working in tandem to create a buttery and deep whiskey as unique as it is delicious. It's spicy as crap. Hey, hey, bourbon dovetail. It's super spicy. Like, I thought rye for days. It's telling me bourbon with some funky finishing. But man... I would buy a dovetail. I'm here for it. If you got, who's had dovetail? Liberty Not License says, yep, it's that good. I assume you had it then, Liberty. Yeah. I mean, it still tastes lighter. still tastes a little younger. Um, but it's, it's well made. I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy it a lot. Dang it to heck. <sighs> All right. Did I put a dead battery in my camera? Sorry, guys. All right, let me try one other thing. <sighs> like, cliffhanger. That's what I'm out about, you know? That's what I'm doing here tonight. Um, you guys know, season three, we've talked about this before, but in Star Trek The Next Generation... No, my camera's still on. Wait for it. Uh, it says it's dying-ish. Try one other battery. But Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, season three, it ends with William Riker, um, number one. You know, he's the second in command. He sees Jean-Luc Picard um, on the, the board ship, and he says, you know, like, big, big climactic ending, but he tells... Worf, who's a weapons officer, to fire on their captain, who's been assimilated by the Borg. Super geeky, I know. But he's Mr. Worf, fire. It's crazy, like, climactic, historic moment in television history. And, uh, yeah, I think I just put the wrong battery in. Sorry, squad. Anyway, I love that that scene, that moment. And that's just what I'm trying to deliver for you all here. As we get into whiskey reveals. <laughs> okay, we're back. Sorry, we lost like 10 watchers. That's not surprising. B. High West Burai. Which, uh... Is very good. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. It's clearly like the the casks, the the barrels they use to create burai. I don't know what year this is, but uh, uh, they're they're mature. They are worth buying. So burai, 
the blend of bourbon and rye from High West. Mm. Delicious. A little bit bitter and medicinal on the end, but but not bad. Like, is it worth 80? No. Is it worth 50? Yeah. Would I buy a bottle? I'm tempted to buy a bottle. I'm really curious to get to E. But A, really good. Barrel dovetail. Really unique. Enjoyed that a lot. B, uh, High West Burr Rye. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. No, I think I would buy that. I'll have it in a fat bottom glass, too. Some evening this week, I got plenty of... No, no I won't, because I'm on a 30-day. Um, when my 30 days up, then I will probably pour that out in a fat bottom glass and sip it slowly. I think I'll enjoy it. C, um, which I will not drink again, but I'm disappointed in. This is Balcones Texas Whiskey. Uh, I've had, I had the Balcones, uh, corn whiskey, which I don't know what this Texas whiskey is. Is it the corn whiskey? Cause I had one of the corn whiskeys, a single barrel and it was good. This is awful. I mean, it's, I, I'll taste it again. I had Garrison brothers. That was terrible. That one. So Garrison brothers and Bower Hill are my top two worst whiskey experiences in this craft whiskey journey. Oh gosh, it smells bad. It's got kind of like a BO kind of like like the funky kid in class. What went wrong with you, dude? Like when's the last time you took a bath? It's not good. Um yeah, it's just not good. I have nothing else to say. Ah. Okay. D now. <clears throat> How do you get it out? D. <sighs> new Riff. Winter Whiskey. I love New Riff, guys. I love them. That said, don't like that one as much. Um, it feels like some of their standard bourbon single barrels are phenomenal. They, I don't know what they did with their winter whiskey, but yeah, I get that green pepper thing and it's not working for me. I, it doesn't damper my love of New Riff, but I've heard some of their limited releases like the Maltsters, which I've not tried. But some of those suck, apparently. Some of them are good. Um, so be careful with the new Riff limited releases. I wish they would just like drop a limited release eight-year-old of their own distillate, or six years, I guess, is probably where they're at. Um, I'd be here for that. Um, this winter whiskey, I'm glad I did not get one because it's not good. Okay. Um, e is a finished product but i don't know the specs on it we're gonna look it up here it is widow jane decadence i mean it, it was good and it was decadent as all get out but let's get the specs on this 10 year old bourbon new as age called that This is from their website. There's no other word to describe this. We took some of our legendary 10-year-old bourbons and finished them in barrels. Dudes, I, 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 I called this. You guys saw me open this. I didn't know what it was. That held New York's finest artisanal maple syrup. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a master taster, but I mean, you guys saw it. I, what do I do? The result is a sweet, rich, creamy, smooth mouthfeel of whiskey flavor that is way beyond good. It is way beyond good. It's decadent. I mean, it's pretty decadent. But I'm, there's nothing else I can say about that. Whew. 
Um, highly recommend. Stamp of approval. Decadent? Yeah. Super sweet? Yeah. Delicious? 100%. 10-year-old. Well-aged bourbon. Maple syrup. It's a winner. Very proud of myself right now. It's a big moment for me. It's just nice to win one. <laughs> All right. Last one. F. Redwood Last Monarch. I've had somebody gave me one of the Redwoods. This might be a repeat. And it may have been the Last Monarch. And the Redwoods generally have a reputation for being pretty good. Like people don't hate them. Um, is the last monarch one of them was a 12 year old aged product finished in something i have not had that um and last monarch i don't think is that um but here we go you guys have tuned in for drew p reads the news excuse me Named after a tree, as all their stuff is. Blend of 60% rye, 40% bourbon. A blend of 4 to 12-year-old bourbon and 3 to 5-year-old rye. So I don't know how many casks go into this. But generally, I'm getting light notes. I'm not getting well-aged notes. So that they might have one barrel of 12-year-old bourbon in there. That said, as I mentioned, it's nice. Not really my profile. I want the depth out of it. Very lemony. Like, if you were to make a bourbon lemonade, Lost Monarch, 100%. Great pairing, flavor-wise. Or if you were to make a lemon-centric cocktail, you should pull Lost Monarch. That would probably be dank. Probably make a pretty rad, pretty rad cocktail. That said... Um, for sipping, it's just really citrusy. Really, really citrusy. So that's it. I'm thrilled to have tried this Widow Jane Decadence because I've been I've been floored. I've been uh, knocked off my saddle. I'm depressed at the state of Texas whiskey. Generally uh, regard it highly. I liked the corn whiskey single barrel I tried. I've heard good things about the Balconis Rye, which is a two-year. Makes me nervous. But this, whatever, I don't have the specs on this Texas whiskey, but it's bad. I know that. <laughs> but I really like the barrel Dovetail, too. Uh, Brewery, pretty solid. What was the OD oh, was the new riff? Yeah, I would stay away from that. That green pepper note was pretty awful. Um, overall, it was a C minus, you know, passes, but I wouldn't ever buy one. Widow Jane Decadence, I would buy in a heartbeat because if you want something crazy sweet or you want to introduce somebody to bourbon and you want to give them something really sweet and desserty, this is definitely the way to go. Is it bourbon? No, but it's good. You can't argue with good. You can't argue with 10-year-old bourbon aged in maple syrup. It's just a winner every day. Liberty not license. I, I've been stuck in a cave for so long. Does Drew have any new babies since I've been away? I only have three. It's not like I have that many kids. And we're done. I gotta like I have the number to somebody to get the snippy snap. And it's gotta happen. Like it's just got to happen. Um, we won't talk about prophylactics, but I'm I'm against. I mean, I'm for in the function they they serve, but I'm against for other reasons. Again, not what we're here for. But <laughs> if you guys have hung out this long, thank you, and you deserve some commentary, some condom commentary. Put it that way. All right, that's all I got, guys. It's been fun. Any other questions before we sign off here? Next week, Brian's back on and we're popping the new riff picks. Just so jacked for that. Can't wait. Um, 
more optimistic getting Kyle's feedback. Kyle Ramage, what a boss. Um, saying the barrels hold up for him, or at least the apple brandy one he popped. So we got that apple brandy finished bourbon. We got that double oak rye. We'll be tasting next week on the live stream again next Monday. The premiere video will be the second episode of the Buffalo Trace distillery analysis of what should you buy. And we're going to go through mash bill number two. So that's talking about Elmer T. Lee, Blanton's, Rock Hill Farms, Hancock Reserve, all these weird single barrel products that come from Buffalo Trace Distillery, but they're actually not owned by Sazerac. They're owned by uh what's it called like a ancient age limited or age limited or whatever it's owned by some other company that owns these brands but sazerac produces them that said it's still buffalo trace with a slightly higher rye mash bill so what's the deal with them and what price should you pay for them this is what we're going to talk about in addition to the weller line on monday it's going to be like a 20 25 minute video should be pretty dank um, then from that, we'll go to Jim Beam the following Monday. Then from that, we'll go to Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill is probably two episodes too, though, because they have a lot of products. More than you'd think. Like, a lot. Some of the... I'm, I'm debating about how much to get into on the, the bottom shelf products. Because Heaven Hill has a lot of budget products. That's kind of how they made hay for a long time. They're only now getting like props for being a premium premium brand or premium producer. Here's a couple of questions. What was your favorite? Kindly. Uh, yeah, that Widow Jane Decadence. Yeah, I think that was my favorite. Dovetail, second. Burai, third. It was a great blind, though. Really enjoyed it. Brian Mackey, I think it's Mackey or maybe make, but probably Mackey. Why do you think Four Roses limited editions don't get the same secondary prices as other limited editions? Do you think that might change? It might change. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't they get the same? Because people are stupid. Um, because <laughs> that's rude. Um, critical analysis. Why does Four Roses not get the same love on the secondary market that like a uh, Booker's 30 or you know, some of the Parkers, some of the better Parkers or, you know, the BTAX or the Mictors 20s. Why doesn't Four Roses get that? Dude, I don't know. I mean, Four Roses LEs are so phenomenal. They're different, you know, they're they're very floral, they're lighter, they're not as like spicy and punch you in the face. Maybe that's it. Maybe a lot of bourbon drinkers like the punch you in the face vibes, whereas the delicate florals of Four Roses may be more reminiscent of Scotch. Maybe that's it. I mean, I'm a few whiskeys deep at this point, but that's probably the best analysis. I could give it this at this point. All right, Tom, dude, thanks for crushing it on the, the wrench game. Everybody, Tom's a great guy. You should follow him on Instagram, TFL Dad. I mean, he doesn't do a lot on Instagram, but he's a great chat. He'll let you know what he's up to. Solid dude, for sure. Um, and thank you all for tuning in. Liberty Not License also on the mod. I, you got to get shout outs. Liberty Not License, great commentator, for sure. Liberty, we should connect at some point like those of you who follow the channel like i'm in this game for fun and to talk and have like have good times so dm me on instagram if you guys have any questions or you just want to chat it up like that's why i started this thing was just for fun so please don't hesitate to reach out for sure i uh i enjoy talking about whiskey but thank you guys for hanging out and talking with me for a couple hours tons of fun good good times talking about weeded's talking about not drinking ironically obviously and then this blind was next level so whoever sent me it uh i apologize for being a douchebag and thank you very much for sending it if you guys want to send me uh either blinds or craft whiskeys to taste i've got you know 30 some what did i say we were at 58 64 we got 36 more craft whiskeys to get through by the end of the year. If you want to contribute, I would appreciate that. Again, Instagram DMs are a good way to make that happen. Or to support this effort, 
this content, you can go to patreon.com slash entry proof podcast. That's a good way to support this and make sure you got access to some cool barrel picks in the future. Some dank swag. If you guys, there were two of you who won t-shirts, I will get those out in the mail in the next 10 days ish. Um, make sure you hit me up on the Instagram as well. That's at droopy whiskey. Have a good night, y'all. Stay healthy, stay safe. And remember to keep it neat per usual. Catch you next week.